and uh, thank you everyone for taking time to uh, join us. I know you're really going to enjoy today's presentation. I've had the advantage of uh, previewing the slides and Mike's uh, got a fantastic um, uh, presentation set for you. Um, just a, a little bit before we get started, those of you who don't know me all that well, uh, I've been with Autotask about uh, six years now, before then about 25 years in the IT services space, and uh, know a little bit about what you're going through and what you're looking to do. Um, we want to touch briefly, and we, like I say, we've got a, a full agenda and we're really expecting a lot of questions from you guys, so we want to uh, briefly just touch base on Autotask uh, here at the beginning. For those of you who are not familiar with what we do, we are the leading software as a service professional services automation tool. So at its core, we help you run your business to do the types of things that you want to do to grow your business. We're going to help you do that. And I used to have to spend a lot of time five and a half years ago explaining you know, who we were, what kind of software, what we did. People didn't quite get it, and now most people get it. So when I talk about Autotask today, I talk about kind of the three parts of Autotask who we are as a company, as the people, and as the product. Because they're all important. You know, Autotask now is 200 employees across four continents doing everything possible to make sure that you maintain that uptime that you see there and above. Um, we had this slight hurricane thing come up the coast. Autotask experienced no downtime. You know, why is that? Well, it's a dedicated people. We've just rolled out a new software release, and we do those about every six or eight weeks, major software updates. We do that because people are dedicated, and dedicated to the point that we have um, been named one of the best places to work in this area over seven years, and that's in every size category. So as we've grown from less than 50 employees, as it was when I started, to where we are now, we've continued to maintain that. Another key piece is the age. You know, Autotask did not decide to jump into a cloud solution when Microsoft and uh, Cisco started talking about it and, and going to your customers and, and start marketing to them about it. We were founded as a software as a service product over 10 years ago. So I drew a line on this kind of timeline chart just to give you an idea, and I find it really interesting to see the things that have happened to the right or after Autotask. And uh, it always surprised me a little bit when I saw some of the products um, that came out <laughs> so far beyond and products that you think of as being um, around forever. So we figured this out and we're not experimenting with you. We're not using you as guinea pigs in how we deliver those things. Once again, here's my contact information. You'll see this again at the end if you, uh, if you miss any of that information. And like I say, in order to uh, really make sure we have plenty of time for Mike and uh, your questions at the end, which we highly encourage, do feel free to use the Q&A and chat windows as we go through this. Um, and um, we will either, you know, we may in fact be holding your questions towards the end when we have our Q&A time. But uh, ask them as you will. We'll be watching those windows. And with that, I'm going to uh, back up again here. I thought Mike had an intro slide. <laughs> We're going to back up. I'm going to introduce Mike Cooch. And uh, Mike, welcome. Hey, thank you very much, Steve. And thank you, uh, Rich, for getting us kicked off. I appreciate it. And uh, let's see here. I think I, I think I have control of this thing here now. So let's see if I can steer this on to the next slide. All right, we got it. Very good. All right, thank you, uh, gentlemen, for the introduction and getting us kicked off. Um, yeah, as, as Steve mentioned, I am not going to stop during the presentation for questions just because I've got a lot of content to cover and you know, kind of try and get into a, a rhythm here of getting that content over to you. So um, please do chat in your, your questions in the Q&A box there, and we'll definitely get to them afterwards. Um, but I appreciate everybody's time and attention. Thank you so much for being here today. I know we had um, great registration and, and we're getting great turnout, so really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy day to be here. And um, as I get started here, I hope you don't mind. We've got a new uh, designer here at Kutenda who does a fantastic job, and um, I asked him to put together a presentation that was a little more fun than, than what I typically do, which is um, you know about 90% bullet points. So we're going to use some more images and things like that in this presentation to have a good time with it. Um, so I hope you enjoy that. 
All right, let's go ahead and get started. So in the next hour, I'm going to share with you the nine essential skills every MSP needs to fill your pipeline and close more deals. And research has shown, and I think you know, real life results have definitely proven that there's a small number of salespeople in any industry, including this one, that outsell the rest of the salespeople in that industry combined. And um, oops, excuse me. And it, those those salespeople are known as rainmakers. You've probably heard that term before. Um, they enjoy far greater pay recognition and certainly a nicer lifestyle as a result than all of the other salespeople that are unable to match their results. And these rainmakers, the way they got there, what, what research has demonstrated is that they have mastered a set of skills that allows them to consistently produce results that are superior to the rest of the market by far. So if you know what those rainmaker skills are and you commit to mastering them yourself, then you know, my argument is that you can enjoy these same sales results and financial and lifestyle benefits enjoyed by the industry's top salespeople. So I'm going to do my best in this webinar to show you how to get there. Um, that's a lot to cover in an hour, so I'm going to hustle, and I'm going to do this as fast as I can here, um, and at the same time, hopefully still get my message across. So um, for those of you who don't know me, that's, that's me. That's a picture of me. That's uh, the one that my mom keeps on her bedside table. Um, I'm the founder and CEO of Kutena and, and the previous founder and CEO of Everon Technology Services. Um, and I built that into one of the leading MSPs in the U.S. And I eventually sold that in November of this last year and uh, since then have been focused on Kutena full-time. But, you know, I've seen this rainmaker dynamic in the managed services industry um, both in my time as the CEO of a managed service provider and now as the CEO of Kutena working with a lot of MSPs. And so I know that this rainmaker dynamic exists in this industry. Um, and in every market in America, I'm sure you've seen that there are the handful of MSPs that are you know, really dominating the competitive landscape and enjoy much greater growth and financial rewards than the other. And they achieve things like the Inc. 5000 listings, the MSP Mentor 250. Um, you know, I had the good fortune of being one of those MSPs. We made the Inc. Magazine list, I think, three years in a row. We grew over 100% a year for a handful of years. Um, we were on that MSP Mentor list several times. And that was a blast. It was a lot of fun. We grew quickly. You know, you get all the challenges that come with growing quickly, and there are a ton of them. But you also get all the benefits, and there are a ton of them as well. Um, and you know, it, it's it's a lot of fun to be a part of something that's on that ride. Um, but I've got to tell you that you know, sales was not always easy for us. Um, you know, at, at my business, it took a lot of experimentation before we got it right. And I started. You know, my MSP in 2003, and at the time, you know, managed services wasn't even in my vocabulary. Um, you know, good people at Autotask and companies like that I didn't even know yet. I mean, I, I just thought, you know, I had some experience in this hourly, you know, consulting business model, and I just thought, man, there has to be a better way of doing this. And so I, I you know, started playing with these different formulas for a new business model with a flat fee service and things like that. Um, to sell that at that time took a lot of experimentation. People were not 